What's up guys? I hope you're all doing really well this week. I wanted to talk to you about one of my favorite anime films of all time, Akira. Or Akira. Either way, you can pronounce it whichever you prefer. I got really excited when I found out that they were releasing the soundtrack in the US for the first time, so I figured this is the perfect opportunity to discuss this movie. If you're interested in checking it out, you can get it on CD on September 15th, and I think at some point you'll actually be able to get it on vinyl. Now, this film has very much sort of a cult following, and there's still a lot of people that probably either haven't seen it or heard of it or just simply have given it a chance yet. It's one of those groundbreaking landmark anime films that set the standard for the ones that we have today. Released back in 1988, back when anime wasn't so, you know, mainstream in the US and had a lot of different quality to it than it does nowadays. Things they did a lot more of that you won't see nowadays, whether it's more graphic violence or just things that aren't as you know, uh, culturally acceptable perhaps. It's baked in that sort of cyberpunk universe that we've seen a lot over the years. You know, this is in things like Ghost in the Shell, Blade Runner, uh, Robocop, all those movies that really have that really cool sort of sci-fi element to them. However, there are a few things about this film that have really stood the test of time and have allowed it to become that classic and really must-see film. It's hard to really get into what the story is all about because even after seeing it probably about four times now, I still have moments where I just don't really understand a whole lot and I end up having to review it later and look online and try to understand the things I didn't quite get. One of the most intriguing things about this movie is simply that tagline you see right on the cover which says Neo Tokyo is about to explode. To me that creates such a unique way of presenting something that you have no idea of what you're really getting into at first. First it tells you something along the lines of Neo Tokyo. Okay what does that mean? Does that mean Tokyo no longer exists? And then it says it's about to explode. Well what does that mean? Is it going to be gone? Is it going to get destroyed? Is something really crazy going to happen? To put it simply, yes, this film is going to have some really intense, really cool moments that you're going to really enjoy. One of the best things about this film is how it starts. You see a lot of imagery, a lot of powerful things happening, but it's really quiet and they just kind of show it to you and allow you to kind of process for a minute, realizing that it's going to be something really crucial to what the overall arcing plot is here. Then they kind of just throw in these really cool little bits of like loud drums or other instruments kind of like this it's like the film knows it has a really sort of epic uh storyline that it's trying to cover but it doesn't sort of hit you over the head with it it makes you realize that wow yeah this is going to be intense but you don't quite know why or how or what it's all going to lead to so the film is based off the manga written and directed by the same artist who designed it katsuhiro otomo he does a great job of combining all the really concrete parts of his manga and putting it into a two hour and five minute movie where you really get things just happening and happening and it almost feels like you want to just see more because there's a lot more to tell. Now the film begins with this giant explosion that took place back in 1988 which completely destroyed Tokyo and resulted in World War III. So the film actually takes place in 2019 in Neo Tokyo. We're basically thrown into a moment where we're trying to understand what caused this, why it's significant, and how it's affected things today. And with that, we're introduced to the two main characters in this film, Tetsuo and Kaneda, who are a part of the Capsules biker gang. One night, they get in a fight with a rival biker gang called the Clowns, which leads Tetsuo to colliding with a mysterious figure who appears to have some sort of psychic powers, and everything kind of gets really crazy and intense from here on out. We learned that the government was trying to make sure this test subject couldn't be found and they try to take him back to their lab as well as Tetsuo who starts to have these sort of weird feelings of power. Now I don't want to give away too much more because this film is very much a good film to just put on just not knowing much about it at all and just try to experience it and just take it all in at once. I'll admit, when I first saw this film, I didn't see it as this really huge, impactful movie like a lot of people did. Maybe it's because I was too young, which I think was the case. As years went by, I really did find this film a lot more appealing. Not only that, but there's so much to take in on first viewing, you might just be left becoming really confused by what you just saw and just kind of wonder whether it was worth it or not. So it really depends on the type of viewer you are when it comes to these sort of films. Now I brought up the soundtrack earlier and man, that is definitely what makes this film. Everything about the music, the pacing of how they blend it in with the storyline, it is incredible. From the moment you meet Kaneda and Tetsuo, you hear this song about both of them where their names are just kind of being blended together where it's kind of like Kaneda, Tetsuo, just going by really quickly and it's really fun and just has this great rhythm that will pretty much get stuck in your head for quite a while if you enjoyed it. But then later when things get really intense and you see how Tetsuo is starting to develop and take control of his powers, you hear like 
a very much more, I don't know, crazy version of just like that dun dun dun. What you hear is something more like... Yeah. <laughs> also, I almost forgot to say that I'm really excited because I finally got this film on the new Blu-ray. This collector's case is incredible. And that means I can finally retire my old DVD. It served me well. This contains the Blu-ray, DVD, and all sorts of other good stuff. You get both versions of the dubs. And I've actually only listened to the most recent one, which I hear is far superior. I know not everyone is a fan of dubs, but for some reason when it comes to anime, I just really like to be able to look at the screen and take in all the art that I'm seeing versus having to kind of glance at the lower part and having to be like, oh, I gotta read that and look back up. It's just not as enjoyable to me as, as far as a viewing experience goes. Then again, if the dub was absolute garbage, then yeah, I, I will go ahead and watch Japanese with subtitles, no problem. And some might feel this way about this dub. There are some parts that are kind of awkward. It was one of those rare anime films that they actually recorded the dialogue before they made the film and then modeled the film and the lip movements and everything like that based on what they had recorded. Add on that it's a little bit of an older anime and you can see moments where they're talking and it's just like, it doesn't really match what they're trying to say and you're just kind of like, whoa. The last thing I'll say about this anime is that I really hope one day we get to see a live action adaptation for it. We almost got Jordan Peele to come and direct it. You know, I really enjoyed his work with Get Out, but I can see why he wanted to just stick with original stuff. Who knows, it might actually get remade into an anime television series, so that would be pretty cool. We'll see, I mean, 2019 is coming up, that's when the film takes place, and you know, who knows, they're... Hollywood, you never know what they're gonna try. They better make sure they get the casting right though. That's really the most important thing. As you guys can see, this film means a lot to me and I really hope you do check it out. It is a really entertaining and really interesting overall story that I think deserves a lot more recognition than it already has gotten. Akira is a must-watch triumph in anime that will literally blow you away with its explosive impact. And that's why this film is a diligent pick. So guys, have you ever seen Akira? Did it intrigue you to watch it yourself someday? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and if you're planning on getting the soundtrack. My name is Dylan, and if you love entertainment, subscribe to my channel while this video ends and send me a thumbs up before you go. Thanks for watching and stay diligent.